Hello, whether it's morning, afternoon or evening, wherever you are, welcome to this worship service filmed at Covenant United Methodist Church. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your heart. Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One every tongue will confess you are God, one every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Come, now is the time to worship. Come, now is the time to give your Just as you are to worship, come, just as you are before your God, come. One day every tongue will confess you are God, one day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. One day every tongue will confess you are God. One day every knee will bow. Still the greatest treasure remains for those who gladly choose you now. Is the time to worship? Come, now is the time to give your heart. Come, just as you are to worship. Come, just as you are before your. Come, now is the time to worship. This is the third Sunday of Lent, and as we have done over the past two Sundays, we have lit a Lenten candle. And we do that today again, and as we light this Lenten candle, described this third Sunday of Lent as the candle of courage, courage to take the gospel and to live it in the world, we pray this prayer. God of love, help us to live today in ways that consecrate the world, defend the vulnerable, protect what is good, and honor creation. Amen. Often when I go to bed, I check my phone and wake up to a notification. And the no notification is from Tesla saying that there is a software update waiting to be downloaded to my car. And the understanding, of course, simply is that once downloaded, the car will be different. I wonder if our gospel today isn't G God's attempt in Jesus to download a new software into the way that humanity will live. Our gospel today is found in the Gospel of John, and I'm reading from John chapter 2, verses 13 through 25. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. 
In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered when it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs that he was doing. But Jesus was, Jesus on his part, would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone for he himself knew what was in everyone. Here ends the reading of the gospel for today. Jesus, as he goes into the temple, encounters an understanding of God and a worldview that troubled him. And as it troubled him, he found his purpose in the temple to begin to communicate a different worldview. Jesus uses the term kingdom of God. And that phrase perhaps begins to help us understand what worldview Jesus wanted to introduce to the people. It would have jumped right out of the pages of the Old Testament. The lion lying down with the lamb, swords into plowshares, every man, woman and child living under their own fig tree. Found in the old Jewish Jewish scriptures themselves and yet here in the temple perhaps Jesus was encountering something very very different which perhaps confused the people who were coming to the temple on this holy of holy holy periods called Passover and so Jesus uses the kingdom of God and wants to change the software of temple culture and, and, and the, the economic and political and social landscape to, to understand differently, a different worldview of what God's will was. An operative worldview Richard Raw invites us to consider is formed by three images. Image of self, image of God, and image of the world. And Jesus moving into the temple and seeing this marketplace where people had to buy ex uh, at exorbitant inflated rates animals in order to sacrifice to God, in order to be put right in right relationship with God, people perhaps experienced there a sense of unworthiness. And doubly so if you were poor because you were supposed to, to sacrifice a, a cow or, or, a, or, or, or cattle or, or, or a goat or a sheep. And if you were poor, then a concession was made and you could sat, sacrifice a dove. But people perhaps felt that in order to be in right relationship with God, the sacrifice was required and Jesus wanted to change that. He wanted to change that and eventually would, in a sense, by offering himself as a sacrifice. First of all, by becoming one of us and endowing humanity with the reminder that we're all made in the image of God. And Jesus walked amongst the people, the poor especially, and he would have communicated to them not that God was aloof, not that God re required a sacrifice in order to be a right relationship, 
but that God was now among us, walking and teaching and breathing and loving us and showing the way. And suddenly a new software perhaps was being downloaded as Jesus went into that temple and wanted to get away with the abominable practices that he encountered in the temple. And the new conception of God that he wanted people to understand was that God was love and God was a love, offered a love that was unconditional. And so the new software, a new image of self, Jesus wanted to communicate in turning over the tables of the money changers. Secondly, the image of God. Perhaps people got a sense that the God that they worshipped was angry, a God who needed a sacrifice in order for them to be, to be accepted. Jesus wanted to change that conception of not only an angry God, but a distant God. God was now walking in Jesus amongst them, and he was loving and, ex and, and accepting of people just as they were, and especially poor people who were told by society that they were lesser mortals. And so the image of God began to change, not only a God of love, but a God of accessibility who loved unconditionally. And thirdly, the image of the world. God, the holy, it was thought, was found in the temple. But Jesus says to those who are gathered in the temple, tear this temple down and I will rebuild it in three days. And of course, he's not speaking about the temple that he was in, built of brick and mortar and stone, but he was talking about the temple of his body. And so he was suggesting that the holy was found not just in the temple, but the holy broke the bounds of any temple, any building, and was to be, be perceived everywhere. And he was also saying that in terms of the image of the world, the software of the world that we live by, that he didn't agree with the, with the, the, the temple being complicit with the Roman authorities or the, the, the authorities of the state. It had become a place where taxes were collected. Jesus was saying that all life was holy. All life was holy, including creation filled in the Psalms with references to the wonder and beauty of the creation that God had fashioned. But everything was holy, and holiness needed to, ex to be extended outward into the way society organized itself on government levels uh, and it, on every level of society. Today, Jesus turns the tables of the money changers over in the temple. But really perhaps what we can say is that Jesus is turning the table of our old understanding, our old world view, turning it upside down. And with the term kingdom of God is introducing a totally different world view, which changes our image of ourselves, changes our image of God, changes our image of the world that we might begin to throw ourselves joyfully into this beautiful image, this beautiful worldview, and described by the term, the kingdom of God. Swords into plowshares, every man, woman, and child sitting under their own fig tree, economically obviously provided for, lions lying down with lambs. This is the third Sunday of Lent. A beautiful, <clears throat> beautiful metaphor for us of Jesus turning over the tables, wanting to change the system as you and I find it today in this world. Too much gun violence, too much poverty, too much racism and bigotry, too much everything other than what God lovingly would birth within our hearts. And so we end our our, our message today as we move towards reminding ourselves of who it is that we followed. We follow the one who turned the tables over of conventional wisdom. 
and took his life to the cross to show the extent to which he would go to communicate God's love to the world. And so we pray, God of love, help us live today in ways that consecrate the world, defend the vulnerable, protect what is good, and honor creation. Amen. As we prepare to partake of the sacrament of Holy Communion, I uh, invite you to have your bread and your, uh, your grape juice or your wine prepared. I say to you, the living God is with us. And with all creation. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the living God. Let us give thanks to the creator of all. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, living God, who loves us with the faithful care of a father and mother. For this reason, we join with all creation to proclaim your glory as we say together, Holy, 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 holy One, God of power, God of love, earth, sea, and sky are full of your glory. With joy we praise you, with joy we praise you, amen. We praise you and we bless you, holy and gracious creator, source of life. Your spirit has always been with creation, guiding its development, calling forth life, infusing beauty, inspiring joy and love. In your infinite love, you created us in your image and allowed us to share in the precious gift of life. You gave us a home in this beautiful world to live in harmony with you, with one another, and with all your creatures. But we have so often turned from your love and wisdom. We have chosen our own way and broken faith with you, our, our, our neighbors, and all creatures. Now all of us can see the tragic harvest of the bitter seed we have sown. Yet through it all, you have remained faithful to us. You graciously called us to turn from our destructive ways and return to you. You sent us prophets, priests, sages, storytellers, and poets to lead us to repentance and wisdom. In the fullness of time, through Mary, a humble woman full of faith, you sent Jesus into the world. Living among us, Jesus loved us. In word and deed, he proclaimed the good news of your reign. He broke bread with outcasts and sinners, and in imitation of your perfect love, he taught us to love neighbor, stranger, outsider, and enemy. He redirected us from violence to peace, from fear to faith, from rivalry to mutual service, and from worry and greed to generosity and joy. He taught us to pray. Our Father, Father who art Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night that Jesus, before he showed us the full extent of his love, Jesus took a loaf of bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took a cup of wine. Again, he gave thanks and gave it to his friends, saying to them, Drink from this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink of this cup, remember me. Now gathered as one family around this table, even though we might be separated by a distance, gathered as one family around this table of joyful reconciliation and fellowship, united in your spirit, we prepare to receive these gifts of bread and wine, and we gratefully offer you our lives as a living sacrifice. 
As Christ stretched out his arms upon the cross to welcome the whole world into your, ge your gracious embrace, we rejoice to enter that embrace and with you extend it to all. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to the living God be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Words of invitation from the Isle of Iona, off Scotland. The table of bread and wine is now ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more. Come to this table, you who have been here often and you who have not been here for a while. Come to this table, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. Friends, the body of Christ, broken for you and for me, the cup of liberation poured out for you and for me. If you haven't yet finished sharing the elements with one another, please continue at your own pace um, and the rest of us can just contemplate what Christ has done for us in this bread and this wine. Friends, as Christ's body and blood was separated on the cross, so now they have been rejoined in us. Let us then by faith now arise, filled with the Spirit, to be the embodiment of Christ in our world. Amen. Lord, we consecrated this bread and in partaking of it, we long and yearn to lead consecrated lives. May the software of your love change our hearts and minds, that we, as people who have been redeemed, find our calling in loving and serving as Jesus did. And so thank you for feeding us. Thank you for sustaining us. And thank you for beckoning us ever onwards into the joy of a life found with purpose in you. We pray for one another, Lord, be with us, guide us through this pandemic, keep us together as a congregation, always striving to love you more that we might serve you better. We pray for our number who are sick, be with them, lay your healing hand upon them, console them in their struggles. We pray for those who are grieving. Lord, may you console them in their grief and may you be present always in the loneliness that they feel through the absence of loved ones. We pray for our church and its mission. Lord, lead us ever deeper and may this Lenten walk once again remind us of the meaning of the cross and that beyond the cross, beyond a death to self, there is a life filled with the resurrection hope of your light and a changed world. And so we pray for that world, for all people everywhere, all your children, for our creation, 
groaning in travail, waiting for the revelation of the sons and daughters of God who have been uploaded with a new software of love. O oh Lord, move in us, for we pray this in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. This does end our worship service. And as we move to enjoying a beautiful old hymn, just remind you of a movie night, not this Sunday night, but next Sunday night. Um, <clears throat> Theirs is the Kingdom, a magnificent story of a United Methodist Church on the East Coast that found a creative way of celebrating the somebodiness of all people. Encourage you to contact Kim and sign up. It'll be Sunday evening at seven o'clock. We'll begin with a short little Zoom to explain the, uh, the movie. We'll then leave Zoom to watch the movie on our own devices and then return afterwards to discuss a little bit about the meaning um, and the impact the movie has had on us. So I encourage you to sign up for Covenant's first digital movie night, um, not this Sunday, but the Sunday the 14th at 7 p.m. in the evening. Amen.